still the champions and the first in a united competition since 9293. Almighty Red, White and Bluesters took the trip to North Queensland to take on the unpredictable but still wild Cowboys team. They say the only way you can tame a wild cowboy is to ride it. And ride it hard we did. Off the back of a tough week, after the narrowest of losses against the Storm, our Roosters dusted themselves off and got ready for another epic battle. An unexpected pre-game injury to our champion b saw Coach Robinson once again move the chess pieces around the board. The inclusion of 18th man, who was up in the concession stands, about to order a hot dog, a can of coke and a packet of chips. Matty Ikevalo was brought right into the team. Well, Mr. Reliable Ikevalo, he's coined a phrase we use in Bondi, the People's Republic of Bondi, rejoiced as one, as he scored five tries, the first time since 1955. Well, Silky, what a night, what a performance, what a taming of the Cowboys, and what a night for the Ikevalo family, and of course, Matt. Getting across the stripe five times, coining the phrase it is now known as the Ick Avalu Express. Yes, hello Roosters fans, and what a night it was up there in Townsville. Roosters 42, Cowboys 16. And there were some great performances, but none other than our guest on tonight's show, the one and only Matt Ick Avalu. But Bush, I do want to acknowledge a couple of other standout performances. Teddy, James Tedesco. Oh, the meters. 231 metres, two line breaks, two try assists. And Siwa Takiaha, I'm not sure if he played the full 80 minutes. He didn't play full 80, but his but footwork it was, was amazing. Uh, you know, 199 metres, 91 post contact, 43 tackles. And what about when he had that little break, show and go, and the little flick Shinny pass to his little, his little tongue and teammate in uh, Satili Tupanua. What a great try that was. Who also played a, a standout game. Yep. Do you know who was really, really good? I know he's not on Dabu, but Dabu in that position, I think, Lockie Lamb. And we talked about that. He really come on and showed some stability at uh, dummy half. And it just kind of looked like, oh, okay, we're roosters. He again. was really good. Yeah, yeah. He, he looked dangerous too. He was darting from dummy half. Uh, and, of course, our favourite player, number six, Luke Keary. One word, brilliant. Yeah, mate. I think he's going to become a yo-yo champion when he finishes footy because everything's on a string. Yeah, he was uh, he was outstanding once again there on Thursday night. Look, there was a quote that the roosters shared on Instagram Loved from it. our coach. And I'm just going to uh, recite it, if you will. Uh, in reference to Matic Avalu, prepare yourself in the shadows and then get the rewards under the spotlight. It's it's Vince Lombardi-like or Jack Gibson-like. I, I love it. And once again, Robbo just pulls something from the top pocket. But I, I really think that identifies with the hard work that goes into these players, the Lockie Lambs, the Matic Avalos, the 18th, 19th, man, Ryan Hall, of course. They, they haven't played a lot of football, but they're there at training every day, doing the hard yards. And then something like what happened on Thursday night, five tries, you know, uh, to the winners goes, goes the spoils. spoils. Yeah, you're 100% right. Was there enough cliches in there? I loved it. I loved it. Full of cliches and the fans will be giving you a smile as they hear you just rattle them off. Mate, once again, we talk about uh, coaching masterclass. Uh, two weeks ago, we wanted to see the battle between Bellamy and Robinson. It was such a master battle. It just... So such great coaching minds, you know, and and you know one point difference. So it just goes to show you the levels of it. But what I love about Coach Robbo, we've been under a, a, an attack from injuries, left, right, and centre. And just with great calmness, he just comes back up. It's like he's sleeping below deck. Just comes up. The weather comes bad. He says, "Boys, go downstairs and sleep. I'll take the wheel from here." And he just puts a calmness, and he expects the players to do their job. The preparation's the key, mate. And he doesn't prepare them a week out, a month out. They are ready to go at any time. They're, they're, they're like a tactical response group. I'll go further, Bush. I'll go one further. I think it's trust. I think he has that much trust in his playing group, and that is reflected by the players as well. So you have the likes of Ikevalu and Lockie Lamb, who, as I've just you know just said, don't get a lot of game time at the moment. But when they're called up to do a job, they expect you to do it, and, and they've done it in spades. Yeah, and you know, you see those visions when the, the camera pans, and when we're, we're watching it at home, camera pans to the coach's box, and you see you know, young kids like Lockie in there, and you're yeah. thinking, well, he's going to get his time. It's, it's, it's funny that you know, the Roosters have got a, a core group of players that are consistently there and consistently picked for good reason. 
but there's so much peripheral players that come on and they play at the same level or standard. You lose a Boyd Cordner, you replace him with a Boyd Cordner. Yeah. You lose a Victor Radley, you replace him with a Nat Butcher. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just, it's it's a great problem to have. And I think, uh, you know, not enough is probably, well, there is a lot said about how good our coach does it. But to see someone come on, BMOS has been one of the standout players in the NRL, not just in the Roosters. Matic Ivalo come on the other night and just said, well, BMOS, I know I've got to take your spot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to honour that spot and do you justice and do you justice he did his energy levels the way he attacked uh you know the way he carts the ball up you know he takes that yeah, the uh, tough carries yeah mate he takes that ball from the the, the 22 uh, and, a, and a cordner like i think boydie sets the the tone there the way we call them cordner carries i mean cordner carries are the toughest of tough and i think the other players draw inspiration from that and think well listen this is how our captain does it and he does that too look it's no secret we base our attack off those big carries from our back three you know, if it's Toops or Ryan Hall or Brett Moz or Jay Moz or Matty Cavalu, that gets us going through the middle and then the, the big men follow after that. Look, just on the game itself, 12-6 at half time. We we're lucky to go in 12-6, a bit of brilliance just before half time. And I think we scored four tries in uh, the 15 minutes before and after in the second half. It, it got away from the Cowboys. They didn't offer much, I have to say, defensively. And look, I think the scoreboard actually reflected OK on them. They scored a couple of late tries. But it was all to play for in that first half. And we just, half time came and we were, we were a completely different team. I th- my theory, and it's only a theory, and this is, uh, you know, let, let's just, you know, wax lyrical for a second. I reckon the Roosters play for 100 minutes, or they prepare to play for 100 minutes. Because Melbourne proved the only way to beat the Roosters is to bash like we bash, ball play like we ball play kick like we kick, and have the same intensity level for 80 minutes. And that's what they did to get a one-point victory, okay? Other teams can't sustain, it seems to be, some of the teams we've come up against, and no disrespect to them, they're either not prepared uh, for the new rules or they're not playing at that level of intensity for the 80 minutes. We seem to grind them down. But but I think we attack in waves, like big body after big body. There was the try, Luke Keery's second try, where Lindsay Collins... Bust through the middle and Luke's backing up. Like that was off. A, that was off a, uh, a try. That was the first set of six. We just keep going forward, and I think they just the opposition team just go far out here. They come again, so they've just got to. They have to defend, as you rightfully say, for for a full eighty minutes. And yeah, whether it's just the physicality of our team or it's the intensity that the teams just or, can't stay stay with us. Or fitness. The other thing I think it's good to note, Silky. And, and again, we're not experts. We're of the fans, by the fans, and for the fans. We respond really quickly. So a lot of sides, you notice this in the Cowboys the other night, they're well coached, they've got some good players. Yes, they've got a few injuries as well. But when Roos has got a momentum in that second half, we were clunky in the first half, yep. dropping balls and you know uh, not completing sets and all those sorts of things. But when you look at it in the second half, once we got that bit of momentum, Cowboys couldn't bounce back. Yep. In the first half when we were clunky, Cowboys got that one try on us, bang, we bounced back just before half time and we're just You, you know what the that. turning point was, was that miss opportunity for the Cowboys to yes. kick, kick the, miss the goal, come off the uprights. So they were never in the game after that. But they were, uh, you know, the Cowboys have got a lot of work to do. I don't know if they're adapting to the rules. They've got, they've got a great side. They've got a fast side. You know, they've got a coach. Defence is a problem. Won a premiership. But, but move, moving on from the Cowboys, Bush, the NRL player poll has come out this week. Yes. Uh, and the Roosters, well, it's, it's the red, white and blue player poll. Uh, best player, Teddy. Obviously, he's the best fullback. Voted by their peers, 150 of their peers. Best winger, Toops. Best centre, best 5'8", of course. Best coach, all Roosters players. So congratulations to all those. Most damaging tackler, Victor Radley. So in the in the team selected by the players, we had the entire back line, seven through one, and Boydie Cordner was there in the in the second row spot. So so well done to Joey Manu, Brett Morris, Luke Carey, James Tedesco, Daniel Tupu, Boyd, anyone else, Victor. Well done to all of those players. And the other one is that the club that most players would like to go to, who guess who? Roosters, baby, Roosters. <laughs> and uh, there's a mention of the best podcast as well, Bush, so well done to me and you. Yeah, that's it, Silky. Well done to the Roosters Radio. But I will say, uh, in your in your players poll there, I mean, you know, voted by your peers, that must mean something to the boys. Absolutely. That must give them a lot of confidence. Uh, you know, those sort of things, obviously, they look at later on when they, when they finish playing because what I love about them is, yep, they've read it. They've gone, yeah, that's nice acknowledgement. And that's back to what's happening. And that's this week against the Raiders. You're on Roosters Radio with Silky and Bush. And when we come back, it's man of the moment. Five try, Matic Avalu.
Radio Hub is Australia's premier podcasting facility. With high quality sound equipment and production services, Radio Hub is a one stop shop for all your podcasting needs. So, if you're ready to jump into the exciting realm of podcasting, contact Radio Hub on 0402 870 900 or email info at radiohub.com.au. Well, Roosters fans, you saw it, I saw it, but no one has seen it since 1955. The other night, the Cowboys took on the might of the Roosters and he rode them hard. Like a young Patrick Swayze from Roadhouse, he just cleaned up those Cowboys in a five-try fest, giving a new name to a train in Bondi, the Ikevalu Express. It was a full Ikevaluing. You'll be sure to join me. Matty, are you there with us? And welcome to Roosters Radio. After a stellar week, great news for one of the good guys. And wow. What a start, Silky. Hey, guys. That's a hell of an introduction. <laughs> Man, I've been warming for that. I've been warming for that, Matt. Since Saturday night when I saw you, uh, just, you know, so happy after the game. And, uh, you know, just, mate, one of the good guys. We've Silky and I have been following you since Wyong Rouge. You've been a great friend to Roosters Radio, and uh, we just wanted to pay a bit of homage to uh, to one of the good guys. Yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, it was awesome. I'm always uh, happy to even be playing footy, and um, even from the Roos, it's good to see you guys support me from there, so... Yeah, get around me here uh, after that. So, um, yeah, pretty happy. Well, Matty, I'll kick it off. Is it true Travis Toomer had to pull you from the concession stand? You are just about to order hot dog and chips uh, and just about to take your seat and you said, mate, put your boots on? <laughs> yeah, no, I was yeah, about to get a sausage sizzle from uh, the barbie up the top and uh, a can of Coke and, yeah, Travis grabbed me. Just tell us how it unfolded, mate. Um, yeah, no, I... I, I um, was the 18th man. Robbo told me I'm warming up no matter what, so just got ready to warm up. And it was funny. I was pretty casual all day, having a few laughs, and um, I think I ate ate a bit too much during lunchtime, thinking I wasn't going to play either. And then, um, yeah, during warm up, probably like 15 minutes in, we did our little high high um, high end speed runs, and um, yeah, BMOs didn't pull up too well, and I. I remember just like kind of looking over over my shoulder at Bimo's like all throughout the whole warm up, just just seeing him like just like I I could see him grabbing at his um groin, so I was just like getting my head right and yeah, getting ready to play. It must be tough. You have to really be, to just be able to turn it on like that. Is that is that a challenge? Um, not quite. It's uh, like when we come to um our training sessions. I, I don't know if you fellas have seen it or not, but our D two sessions, we we go like pretty hard against each other it's like we're playing a little game against each other yep. and i know that our, D, our d2 sessions go for about 40 40 to an hour and yeah it's it's pretty solid session and um the boys no no one holds back in those sessions so it's kind of like we're ready to play a game of footy after that d2 sessions anyways matt uh you know wyong roos sydney roos is 18th man wherever you play uh, you know, Rip Taylor, I noticed you said in your, your press conference afterwards, uh, Rip sent you a nice little uh, one-liner or you know, a couple of words, you know, saying a nice highlights reel or something along those lines, nice show reel, I think it was. That mean a lot. He's a, he's a good mentor of yours, Rip. Yeah, no, he's, a, he's a, actually a really, really great guy. I remember when I first met him, I was a bit um, standoffish with him. I wasn't I wasn't too sure how, how to take him because he's so old school. But, um, yeah, no, he um, warmed up to me and I warmed up to him later on after he's coached me for a while. But he was actually the the, the first person I called when I debuted because he kind of um, got me in the squad in the first place, just playing a fair bit of um, cut with him. So, yeah, uh, as I said before, he's the king of the one-liners and he always comes out. I knew he'd come out with a message like that. Yeah, yeah he's a man of few words, Rip. Hey, Matty, I want to take you back to, I think it was 2016, Wyong Roos v Penrith in the grand final of the New South Wales Cup. I believe you were injured. Not, um, from memory, you used to play in the centres. Is that right? Yeah, I was, uh, I was supposed to play left centre. Just on that, I remember that Penrith won that day, but I remember hearing a story on the bus trip home. It was quite sombre. And you had a chat with, I think it was the strength uh, conditioner at the, the Roos at the time saying you, you wanted to play wing. And uh, it was words on the fact, well, you mate, you've got to do a fair bit of work to get there. Do you, do you remember that conversation? Because if you look at how your career has, has moved upwards, you pretty much took the advice and, and here we are today talking to you, hopefully uh, with a new contract uh, not far away. Yeah, I, I, I always said, uh, like, it doesn't matter where I play, I, I'll always give it my 100%. But, um, yeah, no, I, see, I, I really enjoy playing centre and I, I know that um, Robbo always says that he, he sees me as a centre, but when it comes to wing, I, I think that's kind of like how my games kind of evolved. Like I, I love the yardage carries, those tough carries are probably I've taken on those on board. So 
I, um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm enjoying the, the wing spot at the moment. And just if I look back at the ruse, we like in the game there on Thursday night, obviously Lindsay, Satili, Nat Butcher, Pawasa, all part of a, a Wyong Roos squad. Unfortunately, the, the Roos are no longer with the Roosters, but played a lot of football with those guys. It must be good to get a win like that, you know, having played so many games together. Yeah, 100%. We always, all of us fellas always laugh about the, the Ruse days and how it was just a, a, a enjoyable days where we play together. And um, I think we had a lot of fun when we were playing there. So when we're playing um, with the Roosters together, it's just like, it's even better. It's such a good feeling. Uh, Matt, Gilded across the stripe, you know, five times the other day. I mean, it's it's you know, it's rare in rugby league. But did you send Ryan Hall any sort of uh, commiserations cards afterwards on behalf of yourself and Luke Geary? Or because I tell you what, mate, I was going to send him a beanie and scarf at the fiftieth minute and say, "Let's just put that on. They'll be they'll be finished in thirty minutes." Uh, he, he did say something uh, joking around in the game. Just give give him one. Um, but um, even I think Geary was giving Hawley a bit of shit, and I'm, I'm glad they went down there on that. That, uh, at the end of the game, and I felt like he really should have scored that uh, that last try of the game, but um, yeah, it didn't work out that way. Well, for our Roosters fans that don't know a lot about, Ryan Hall is a prolific try-scoring machine from the English Super League <laughs> and uh, and uh, Great Britain, and I tell you what, it won't be long till he gets across the stripe. Well, actually, we'll be talking to Ryan in the next couple of weeks, but uh, mate, what's he like around camp, and what's uh, you know what's what's the feeling with uh, with Ryan? He's come back from some injuries. How, how do you find him going? Oh, he's good. He, he's um, He's always so positive, like um, no matter what, even when he was injured, he was um, just, he just thought about the positives of everything. And um, yeah, he's been a good mentor for me. He's always um, taught me a lot when it comes to the winger role. And yeah, I've I've taken that on board. I think, um, I think I've got that, that yardage mentality from him because he's just a beast from the the backfield. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I I like, um, I like, I like having him around and I know all the boys do. He's a fair joker too. He doesn't, um, he doesn't like come across that way, but he's an intelligent man. But he he jokes all around a lot. So, yeah, yeah, mate, good. best way to be, Matt. The uh, the wingers in the NRL across all the teams have just got this unique ability. Is it, is it something you work on aerobatically, acrobatically? I don't know how to describe it for our fans, but it just seems all of you, you included, you did it the other night beautifully. You're in the air. You're on your side. You're avoiding the corner post. You got your shoe just <laughs> inside the touchline. It's 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 theatre. It's what, like watching a ballet, seriously. It, it's amazing to see some of the tries are scored. And with you the other night, it was all like that. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's something you need to learn if you're, if you're a winger growing up. It's just you need to know where that touch line is. Um, yeah, and, and there's, a, there's a certain agility that you kind of need to be able to get those, those dives to the corner. And I think everyone's working on that. A lot of teams are too. And, yeah, I, I think that's the, the marginal er- of error just knowing where that tu- that touchline is. So let's cut to the chase, mate. What was your favourite out of the five? Which one was your favourite? <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's say um, number four. Number four. Oh. Talk us through it. I can't even... Mate, there was that nah, many. I forgot what they were. <laughs> <He's only joking. laughs> nah, I just think it's probably the only one that I didn't have to... I didn't get the, the short ball from Joey or a, or a quick pass from uh, Flano. It was the one in the right corner. I was just yeah, when you had to work, you had to step, step yeah, him and yeah. then pumble him over. You, 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 yeah. you just ragdolled him. Oh, that was what we yeah. called the Ryan Hall. Nah. That was what we called the Ryan Hall tribute I, st- try because he reckons that he he jumped inside you like Whoopi Goldberg from Ghost, so you could score that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what. Could have just passed it to Joey. Joey says this. He, he reckons that he could have just passed it to him, and he would have just strolled over. But yeah. Well, hang on a sec, Didn't mate, we? because there was a little <laughs> there was a little kick that went over with about ten to go, and Joey Manu caught it. I guarantee if you would have caught that ball, you would have scored a number oh, six. That's so funny. I said to jo- we we laughed about this. I said to Joey, I said, um, I was calling for it. And he goes, no, but it was landing in, in for me. So There you yeah, go, eh? I, I, I still think he, should, he could have scored it in the corner if he kept going. <laughs> yeah, I agree <laughs> for sure. Mate, you really enjoy your footy. I mean, you can hear the smile coming through your voice. You know, you just yeah. love your rugby league. Uh, you know, you almost gave it away for teaching. Uh, is that a passion of yours to to go on after after the uh, the mighty days where you hang the boots up and and pass on some of the the knowledge? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I uh, I remember I started out as a teacher's aide, and I really enjoyed that. So I quit um, the factory and I started teach uh, my teaching degree. I think what was it like two thousand and well, it would have been sixteen or something. Yeah, and I just sort of thought footy's not for me anymore. I'd rather do teaching and. Yeah, luckily enough, that year I, I got the uh, call up to the Roosters. 
Wow. And and what's you know what's the decision like that? Is it is it something you sit down with your family, your friends, and you know obviously you've been a handy football. You've come through the junior rep program. Who helps you make that decision? Is it a Rip Taylor or a Trent Robbins that says I believe in you? Is it your your family, your father, mother? Who's the mentor that yeah. helps you make those decisions? Well, um, my my partner Elise, he um. I remember sitting down and I was talking to her and I just said, well, I don't think I'm going to play this year and um, just because I would rather just do my teaching. And then um, she just – I think I think she 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 wanted me to do it just for the social social part of it so she could see yep. the, the other girlfriends at the games. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I ended up playing again that year. And, yeah, I, I actually – that was probably my, my most fun year. It was that um, – I'm pretty sure it was the one that we went to – oh, no, it wasn't. No, nah, we, we pulled up in the semis that year. Wow. We didn't make the grand final. Wow. I know that there's personal sacrifices when you touch on your partner. Obviously, she's uh, working in health, so you can't see her. How's that all going? Yeah, it's it's, it's a bit hard, but um, I know she she's pretty like she. I know she she supports me no matter what, but um, yeah, it, it gets to me sometimes. But like, it's good to I can at least FaceTime her and we can talk all the time on I, the phone. I think that's one of the the points that us as football fans don't really recognise or understand is some of the sacrifices that you footballers are making. I know people talk about the, the money that you guys earn, but there's also a lot of sacrifices, case in point, the Warriors, but it, but even local yeah, players having fun. having the ability to, to see their loved ones. It's it's probably pretty lonely there, Mondays through Fridays, well, I'd imagine. Well, there's injuries and defeat, yeah. but there's little things, isn't there? You know. Yeah. Well, it's not too bad. I've got Puasa living with me. Yeah? How's he go? Yeah, he's not too bad. He cleans up after himself, so... You couldn't, you couldn't ask for any more. Well, you better let him know while you're with him, mate, that he's next week's guest on Roosters Radio because he has <laughs> yeah, been, he's, yeah, he's been barnstorming. And actually, what he also needs to know is Silky, my uh, co- co-host here. I call him Pawasa Farmer Silky because he's such a big fan of those tough carries. Yeah, well, can you can you give him some questions about me? I just want to see if he's going. Yeah, to we're going to do a flatmates. Stuff. We're going to talk do some f- bad stuff about me. Yeah, That's we'll do that, mate, for sure. We'll get the go- we'll get the out. goss. Now, lastly, mate, we know um, you know that you have been in discussions to hopefully extend your contract. But looking at this year, setting goals, uh, you know, what, what's on the horizon? Is it maybe a bit of rep footy? I think Tongan Heritage, is that right? Yeah, uh, it's always been a dream of mine to play for Tonga. So um, I'd love to represent my, my dad and his country. And, yeah, it, that'd be a, a little cherry on top if I get to play as many games as I can this year. Well, mate, we're going to represent uh, Nick Politis and the Roosters fans, and we're going to try and make sure that they get you signed up quick, smart, because we don't want anyone getting their dirty hands on you. Yeah, you're playing amazing. You're just a ball of energy and uh, and joy, and such a, a great uh, you know smiling man to speak to. And long live your form and great success. And uh, it's just going to be hard to keep Bmos out. Well, I'll slide him in somewhere, but mate, don't get off that wing. <laughs> no, I'll do my best. I'll do my best, Nick, fellas. Good on you, Q. Thanks very much, mate. Uh, bye. Bye, mate. Well, Bush. What a joy to be around Matty Cavallo. We had the pleasure of being with him in Europe. And as I was saying in the interview, always had a smile on his face. Always one of the, uh, like a lot of energy. He exudes energy, but really a, a good, fun guy. And what a game he played there last Thursday night. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I spent uh, a little bit of time with the coach whisperer, and he talked about the energy of players. And it, Matty Cavallo was walking along, and I think he was at Wyong at the time. And I was just standing next to him, and I said, mate, can I ask you how you, you read the energy? You guys see that guy there? He goes, he is definitely a good footballer, but his energy is probably one of the best in the team. And I just it stuck with me, and I thought about that tonight's uh, you know talking to Matty Cavallo on the on, you know on our podcast. You just get that feel across the microphone. He's having a he's smile, positive, having he, a laugh. Yeah. He's the sort of guy you'd want to have as a great mate when you yeah. have a few beers with, because you know that's a great feat. He's just broken a record that we haven't seen since nineteen fifty five, and you know he's joking and laughing about it. Something he's very proud of. But to him, the milestones will come later on. And, you know, talk so highly of his partners and, and everything else. It's, it's just loving his football. Well, one thing I did notice, just his body shape. Like, he, he mentioned in the interview they've been doing a lot of hard training. He, he looks like he's filled out. We probably should have asked him in the interview. But he looks like he's, a, he's big around the chest. And I loved hearing that interview. He loves those tough carries because we set up our attack off the back of those big three at the back and those big tough carries to get that roll on through the middle. Well, if you think about it, we talked about Ryan Hall in that interview. Ryan Hall's that 
Chris Close, if I can go that far back to yeah. our fans. And Justin Carney was a former rooster come from Canberra. Such a solidly nugget. Built, fast nugget, very hard to tackle. Or you got your Blake Ferguson, you know, your Toops, your tall rangy wingers. You know, the Melbourne wingers are tall and rangy. There's either two types. There's yeah. the nuggets who are super fast and powerful, or there's the tall rangy guys who you don't usually kick to. And uh, Ickers sort of sits in the middle because he gets up for the ball too. Yeah, he does. You're on Roosters Radio. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> Welcome back to Roosters Radio and Thursday night at our home, the SCG, 7.50 kickoff. Roosters taking on the Raiders. Bush, it's a mouth-watering grand final replay. How do you see it? Mate, tough game this week uh, for our boys. I mean, you know, don't write Canberra off. Two, two big injuries, though. Yeah, big and, ones. And, the, you know, major players. And, and a little bit like ourselves, you know, with... Uh, with Victor out and, uh, you know, uh, Sammy Verrill's out. They've now got Josh Hodgson out, I believe. Uh, Bailey Simons and the winger. Oh, he did his shoulder, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so tough for the Raiders. But, you know, they've got a good good, good forward pack and Jack Whiten's an outstanding player, I think, you know. Well, on, well on, captain. on that point, so Luke Keary up against Jack Whiten, probably playing for the number six spot for New South Wales. So I'm sure Freddie Fitler will be uh, keeping an eye on this. But, you know, uh, different styles of footballers. Jack Whiten has that... Damaging ball running where Luke's a bit more flashy with the ball, but uh, nonetheless, a, a great mouth-watering matchup. Yeah, big matchup, and uh, you know, Roosters at home. Yeah, Bush, we certainly are, and can't wait to be out the game for this one. It's going to be exciting. It's exciting to have footy back. I know that the Waratahs have been playing out of the cricket ground, doing all the social distancing and all this uh, new normal. So it's going to be really interesting, as you say, to see you know how many people can get into the stadium and what it looks and feels like. So. Uh, you know, home game, boys will be uh, loving having the fans there instead of cardboard cutouts. And, uh, yeah, exactly right. Yeah. But uh, another mouth-watering matchup of the two coaches. We've got Robbo, you know, the measured thinking man's football coach, and you've got the man who wears his heart on his sleeve, won a premiership with us at the Roosters, Ricky Stewart. Yeah, can't wait, Silky. It's uh, another coaching masterstroke, and it's great to see him face off. Two great coaches, so it'll be really interesting to see what they do on Thursday night. Well, enough of the chit-chat, Bush. Have you got a score prediction for us? Yeah, I do, Silky. I think with uh, Canberra and a couple of injuries, a uh, good strong finisher and, mate, their little craftsman at dummy half, I think we're going to do uh, something similar to the Cowboys. It won't be in the 40s. Oh, wow. It'll, it'll be in the 30s. It'll yeah. be 32-12. 32-12. Okay, I like it. Well, look, I agree. I think we are going to win and it's our first game at home for 2020. So uh, looking forward to heading out there to the SCG. And with that in mind, I'm going to say Roosters to win. I don't think they've got many points in on the Raiders. I think they're going to lose a fair bit of attack with Hodgson not playing at nine. So I'm going to say Roosters 28, Canberra 6. Wow. Well, that's it for this episode of Roosters Radio. We want to thank our special guest, Maddie Kavalu. You've been listening to Roosters Radio. East to win. win.